All right, Crystal, what are you taking a look at? Well, guys, Sarah Fisher over at Axios has a pretty big scoop about the new post-Zucker direction of CNN. According to her reporting, new CNN boss Chris Licht is scrutinizing talent for partisanship and leaving open the possibility of a purge if hosts like Jim Acosta and Brian Stilter cannot rein it in. Sarah writes, quote, Licht wants to give personalities that may appear polarizing a chance to prove they are willing to uphold the network's values so that they do not tarnish CNN's journalism brand. For on-air talent, that includes engaging in respectful interviews that don't feel like PR stunts. For producers and bookers, that includes making programming decisions that are focused on nuance and not noise. This is the first we've heard directly that host might be on the chopping block, but we have been hearing a lot of similar noises about getting back to straight journalism and dialing back the outrage machi machine since the new regime of bosses came in under the Discovery merger and after Jeff Zucker's ouster. Heavyweight investor John Malone, for example, had this to say to CNBC last year. I would like to see CNN evolve back to the kind of journalism that it started with and, uh, you know, actually have journalists, which would be unique and refreshing. And we just reported on Monday that Chris Licht has created a new style guide that mandates the breaking news banner only be used when, you know, there's actually breaking news. According to that report, quote, CNN's ubiquitous breaking news banner is gone, now reserved for instances of truly urgent events. Snarky on-screen captions like angry Trump turns briefing into propaganda session, for instance, are discouraged. Political shows are trying to book more conservative voices, and producers have been urged to ignore Twitter backlash from the far right and the far left. That all sounds pretty good, right? Do actual journalism, tone down the sensationalism, ditch the team blue DNC cheerleaders. But there's reason to believe that the changes are unlikely to last. And there's even more reason to believe that CNN's new bosses do not actually have a vision for media that will serve a people's agenda since all cable news is really about one thing, delivering for corporate advertisers. And that model will never be amenable to the media work that really needs to be done, and that is standing up to political, financial, and cultural power. So first, why am I skeptical that the changes will not last? Well, because I went through a very similar moment and a very similar purge at MSNBC. It was the dog days of the second Obama term. Ratings at MSNBC were total trash. And a new head of NBC News was brought in to sort out the future of MSNBC and actually specifically what to do with star anchor Brian Williams, who had been sidelined thanks to his revelations that he had lied repeatedly in a self-aggrandizing way. Ultimately, Andrew Lack, who was longtime friends with Brian Williams, decided the answer to their MSNBC low ratings problems and their multi-million dollar anchor on the sidelines problem was the same shift the network away from opinion and towards the supposedly down the middle journalists of NBC News. Now this decision, as best I can tell, was driven by Lack's personal friendship with Brian Williams and by the fact that both sides no label centrism is popular in the wealthy Manhattan cocktail circuits that media execs like Lack, and by the way, the new guy at CNN, Chris Licht, like to frequent. So at MSNBC, this shift meant Chuck Todd getting a daily show. It meant Brian Williams being brought into MSNBC, first for breaking news coverage and then for his own show. And people like Ed Schultz, Melissa Harris-Perry, and yours truly, getting axed. Now, one problem with this move towards trusted journalists is pretty obvious in its conception. In what world does a man who had just been caught repeatedly lying represent a turn towards grounded journalism? Get back to that in a moment. But the more immediate issue was that from a business perspective, the plan just didn't work all that well. Now, you'll be shocked to learn that more Chuck Todd was not, in fact, the network savior that media execs thought. Instead, what saved MSNBC, like CNN, was Trump. And in the Trump era, the more opinionated the hosts, the more willing they were to go down the Russiagate rabbit hole, the higher the ratings. And so even though Lack and Co.'s personal preference was a milk toast, corporate-centered, aligned centrism, the sort of fare that is still dishonest, but in a way that's comfortable for corporate advertisers, the ratings of the most committed Russiagaters could not be denied. And so you ended up with a very similar formula at MSNBC as you ended up with at CNN. Opinionated anti-Trump coverage, but of the type that centered on lots of pearl clutching over his personal affect rather than focusing on his corruption or failed promises to the working class. That squared the circle of rating well with Dem partisans, but also being non-threatening to advertisers and to the Democratic elites who had their own hands dirty with corruption and failed promises to the working class as well. So as I'm watching Chris Licht go through exactly the same cycle <laughs> as Andrew Lack before him, you can see where all this is heading. CNN ratings will remain low until Trump returns, and then CNN will find it irresistible to go back to the formula that was financially successful for both CNN and MSNBC in the previous Trump era. 
By the way, I have no problem with Trump outrage per se. There are a million ways that he is a true outrage. My problem is with an outrage that is either surface level based on his boorishness or that is based on lies like Russiagate or that manages to criticize him from the right for the few good things he actually does like negotiating with hostile regimes or imposing tariffs on China. And that gets the bigger problem here. The issue with CNN isn't really about personalities, even people who are really annoying like Brian Stelter and Jim Acosta. And the problem is not the network being opinionated. The real problem is an entire cable news structure that will always, first and foremost, serve capital. Why? That's where the money is. And serve existing power, because exposing the powerful would mean exposing themselves and their friends and their advertisers. Cosmetic changes to any of these networks are completely meaningless. The only reforms that would actually matter would be to upend the business model that these companies run on. That is clearly not happening. Or to change the social class that their talent and producers come from and represent. Also clearly not happening. Instead, you'll get some surface level shift from one flavor of corporate shill to a different flavor of corporate shill and they'll scratch their heads and wonder why no one trusts them. So Sagar, even though you hear some things you may say, oh, maybe- Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.